All right. You've begged for it. You've nagged for it. It's time for the final autopsy of the Yamato Dataway control cabinet panel. Now, I've still got to clean up my table here, but just for now, I thought I'd do a bare basic intro. Um, this came out of a mid-80s vintage, if not maybe early 90s vintage, uh, Yamato Dataway, a linear dataway system. Uh, you'd see previous videos of mine of that. Uh, PLC based. I had the control panel and everything for it. Um, system was too much of a wreck to power up, so I've just scrapped it out as it is. A nice selection of switches. There's a master 40 amp, 240 volt main switch. Um, yeah, 100 to 200 volts. Um, yeah. AC 220 volts. It's probably a main there, actually. That one's got an RCD in it. Little Mitsubishi electric, 5 amp, 3 amp, and 10 amp. They're actually quite handy for experimental stuff because they're below my normal main panel breakers. So I could put a 5 amp breaker like that one on something. Contactors, they look like standard 16 volt contactors, those two. Relays, cube relays with indicator neons. That's a Omeron solid state timer, 2S. More cube relays in their socket mounts. Many of the screws haven't even been used. All the terminals. So they're always worth keeping. Cube relays and mounts. They're probably about $15 a pop from uh, JCAR or someone like that. RS components. Main digital board or control board. We've got bridge rectifiers. DC filter caps. What I could only assume would be power switching transistors or voltage regulators, little socket CPU there by the looks of it, Hitachi, it's a HD68HC000YB, interesting, some old EEPROM chips, version 3.10, uh, Toshiba microprocessors, so there's four of them, yeah, those there are all the same. Motorola 6868 IPs, two of them. Um, Asahi Keishi, Japan, AKM 62256ALP-10, two of them. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. Up here, this is what drives the... Uh, product vibrators, the trays, vibrates the material down into the weigh heads and that's fed by a 100 volt DC bus, I've got the transformer and everything around that big gold coloured thing in the corner there is the transformer 100 volts, 3 kVA that would feed straight into a, well, I think it fed straight into here but most of the DC, or well, most of the AC went straight to a big capacitor bank with a rectifier in it so this would feed off DC I uh, looked these MOSFETs up, these are uh, International Rectifier um, third generation HEXFET MOSFETs. They're a pretty serious little transistor. They're also accompanied by rows and rows and rows of little diodes which don't seem to have any data on them, they're unlabeled. There's a little blue dot on some of them, that's about it. But they look like, say, a 10 or 15 amp diode at least 10, 15 amps. So there's pairs of them on each one of these hex fets. A ton of those fets though. Same with the bottom. Um, I believe they're all the same. I'll pull the board out and find out for sure. But they're all interna international rectifier, 25 amp, third generation MOSFETs, aka hex fets, on their website anyway. Well their mar marketing name is hex fet. That's another another one of those 100 volt in uh, 5 and 12 volt output switch mode mini power supplies. Um, noise filter, RF mains noise filter, 240 in, 240 out. Those are 240 volt DC supplies, or probably 260 by the time it goes through. That looks like input and that looks like output maybe. But yeah, there's a bridge rectifier, what looks like a... Um, metal oxide barista, MOV, a fuse and a bunch of 270 microfarad 400 volt 
DC Nichicon caps, there's three on each one of them. There's some random control board. These ones here seem to go down to, yeah, they would have connected to this down here. But unfortunately those transistors or whatever they are are all fully insulated and covered, so I can't see what they are yet. But we shall find out. And there was a little buzzer on there which I pulled off, that works quite well. It's a repeating beep, beep, beep type buzzer. Uh, don't really know what those are. We can only find out. Some kind of control relay or something. Big terminal strips and barrier strips. Might be worth desoldering some of them from the boards and keeping them. I'm going to keep these big barrier strips. All of these, they're very handy. Still got some of the covers partially intact. That's the mains input there. That was 240 volt single phase input. And the black wires went down to there. I think they feed into that somewhere. Either way, I think I better uh, clear the table and get rid of everything. Doorbell. I do need a doorbell that doesn't sound like an air raid siren, I suppose. Not an air raid siren, but just a uh, twin gong high, high alert alarm. I had a complaint about that one day. I was sounding the alarm gong for a bit and somebody thought there was a fire. So yeah, I think I better stick to a normal doorbell. Old school, original one. Okay, got some of it out. Just starting in this bottom corner here. Uh, these are definitely power switching FETs. It even says it on the board there. It's FET1 and FET2 and whatever. Uh, capacitors here are 10 mic, 450 volts. So this whole assembly would probably take about 250 volts DC, 300 volts DC quite easily. Uh, same with these caps here. It's all rated for 240 volts, not 100 volts. This stuff here is all 100 volt DC, or 110 or whatever. By the time it goes through the rectifier, it's probably 120. Um, but that's not to say that these FETs aren't rated up to something like 450 volts anyway. I believe they are. There's a data sheet online. The actual type is uh, IFRP254 by International Rectifier. So those tech gurus out there who like to Google things, there are data sheets online. I found one a couple of nights ago, and they're a pretty beefy little power fet. So, yeah, there's two little DC cap assemblies and two power switching uh, fet assemblies. So I've obviously got control input and voltage monitoring, output and input. Pretty simple. Not sure what to use them for, I mean, someone makes a good enough offer, I could probably stick them in a uh, shipping box and send them somewhere. Now, next lot I'm going to get off. I'll leave that, that's pretty much useless. Um, little fuse holder there, might be worth keeping. Yeah, I'll keep that since it's got a tiny little bracket. I'll get this thing off. There's really nothing really to it, it's just on these little plastic standoffs like a computer main board's used to. I think they still do. Yeah, that's going to be easy. Got a rubberized insulation mat. Hmm. Fairly heavy duty little thing. And also separate the main board, which is the same deal, it's just on these little nylon standoffs. Okay, so the main board's out, as is the uh, power switching board for the vibrators. And there's a total of 40 of these hex vets on there. That's quite a lot. I know they're not particularly expensive, but I'd hate to have to replace them all. I'm sure some of them have blown over the years, but who knows? They're pretty tough little units, so they might still be alright. The main CPU on it. I don't think I'm going to get be able to pick that up without zooming a bit more. Either way, it's an interesting little setup. Those aren't ICs either. Those are Omron EECF uh, 506s, and they're bridged together in packs of four. So they're like an isolator or something like that. I believe those are 24 volt DC uh, power regulators. 
I think they are. They are an NAC 7H24. That name sounds very familiar for some reason. Either they're regulators or they're some kind of switch. But since there are bridge rectifiers, caps, and then these, I'd say they're voltage regulators. Likewise, there are groups of these little pack assemblies, ceramic plate type assemblies. Doesn't even have a number on them. No. Maybe what used to be a number there, but it's all illegible. So it's obviously a specific Yamato thing. Amp 1, EM 14, amp amplifier, amp 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16 of them, amplifier things. And these connectors would go out to, oh, what did they go out to? I think they went out to the vibrator trigger control board. Not this one, but there was another board that, down there for control. No, sorry, these are wayhead. This is wayhead input. Ah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all wayhead input. That's main power for this board. And that goes out to the wayheads themselves. There was a bunch of boards on the other side of the cabinet. This was the back of the cabinet. On this side of here, there was another panel with lots of distribution boards that went off to the wayheads. Of course, so, yeah. That's wayhead control. That's probably signal amplifier from the wayhead. That'd be 24 volt control for each bank of wayheads. And the rest of it just goes through processing. And I'd say that chip there is what tells the machine exactly what's going on. That's the brain of the sim brain of the system. The control station itself had a motor big Motorola processor in it, but that was only for the control station. I think that's what drives this unit. Uh, there's a DC rectifier and cap here. 1000 microfarad 50 volts, so it must receive 24 volts AC input and it does it all on board, turns it to DC on board. Yeah, not too bad. I'll put that one aside, I know someone will want that. Same with these, um... Okay, maybe nobody, maybe nobody will want that now, but I'll put these aside though. The board's more of a wall hanger than anything else. It's really of little use to anyone unless you happen to have one of these Yamato sitting in your basement. I don't think it'll be of much practical use. Either way, I'm going to pull the rest of this out next, I think. Find out what these are. It's got LEDs on them too, and that lot's missing. Yeah, they're socketed, they unscrew. That lot's been pillaged. A lot of this never had connections in it when I found it, so God knows what else is missing. And I'll unmount all these, dismount all these relay blocks and get all this scrap cable out of here. Even just keeping this spiral binding stuff's quite handy, particularly if you're going inside computer cases. It's actually quite expensive to buy this transparent or black nylon or PE or whatever it is, spiral bind. And then we'll get into the PLC once I've stripped the rest of this out. The brass standoffs are kind of handy. Alright, pretty much done now. I might keep these standoffs, but the cabling and stuff's not really worth the effort. Even as PVC scrap, it's such fine core, it goes as sort of mid-grade standard PVC. So I'd be lucky if there's a dollar worth in this whole thing. Not worth the time to pull it out. I might pull these big leads out. I did make sure to disconnect them properly. But the other ones, I just chopped them off for the time being. I can make new leads when I start again. I'm going to love din rail stuff. I'm going to keep this alloy din rail because all you have to do to mount them up is just snap them on like that. And it's there. To release it, just pull the tag down and lift it off. That's why I like using din rails in a lot of my control cabinets. You don't have to worry about screwing things to a panel like that. They do have old, old fashioned screw holes in them, but if you can din rail mount it, that's all you got to do. And it's in. Wonderful stuff. And this PLC, well, it's a bit of a dinosaur. It's rated for 100 to 200 volts input. I don't know how well it would like 240 volts input, although it seems to re receive that quite fine from the main supply. 
I believe it gets its feed straight off this. So, yeah, it's worth a shot at 240 volts, but even then, I don't think this has PC input on it. Like before, way before USB or Modbus or anything like that. Yeah. There's actually a chip missing there. There's supposed to be a chip in there. Interesting. I wonder if they pinched the ROM chip out of it. Looks like it. They've used the socket. It's been opened and um, yes, it's missing its main ROM chip or EEPROM or whatever that would use. So it's probably useless. I mean, I've already got two or three um, big PLCs floating around, so we might make this a dedicated equipment autopsy. It's in three levels, stacked. CPU, um, terminal switch block one and two. So, yeah, we might make this a separate equipment autopsy instead because there's virtually nothing I can do with it as it is. I doubt you'd even get programming software or the programming tool for it. Yeah, old school Mitsubishi VF, oh not VFD, um, PLC. So I'm going to box all these things up with my other breakers and bits and pieces and throw the rest, on this, rest of this on the trailer. Uh, after getting this DIN rail out of course and these two leads. So yeah, that's the end of that one for today. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, I forgot about this thing. They say SSR1. SSR 2, 3 and so on. So whatever SSR is, I believe solid state relay actually. Um, yeah. Looks like it. There's a trigger. Those two small terminals will be trigger. These two big ones will be current handling. So they go out through here and there'll be a trace on the other side of the board there. Yeah, those will be solid state relays. The other ones have been pinched for something. So sort of worth hanging on to.